the structure of the atom. So an atom is the smallest particle of an element that retains the chemical properties of that element. So the nucleus is a very small region located at the center of an atom. The nucleus is made up of at least one positively charged particle called a proton and usually one or more neutral particles called a neutron. So we'll do a little drawing here. So we have our nucleus and inside our nucleus we're going to have, sorry my circle's not drawn to scale, we're going to have protons and neutrons inside our nucleus. And I'm going to put the symbol, I'm going to sh when I put these in here so you know what I mean, I'm going to abbreviate protons, P raised to the positive sign, and neutron will be N raised to the zero uh, power. The reason I do that, because protons are positive and neutrons are neutral. So we have protons and neutrons. So surrounding the nucleus is a region occupied by negatively charged particles called electrons. And you'll see me write electrons like this, E raised to the negative sign, because electrons are negative. And just to clarify, protons, neutrons, and electrons are often referred to as subatomic particles. So now, like I said, not drawing a scale, sorry about that. Try not to cut off the words when you're writing. All right, but around, they're not perfectly um, circular, are your electrons. They're located on these energy levels, which we will talk about more in depth very soon. Right? And they're on these energy levels. Okay. So, the discovery of the electron. Cathode rays and electrons. Experiments in the late 1800s showed that cathode rays were composed of negatively charged particles. These particles were named electrons. And J.J. Thompson discovered the electron. So here's a cathode ray tube. So J.J. Uh, Thompson's cathode ray tube experiments measure the charge to mass ratio of an electron. And Robert Millikan's oil drop experiment measured the charge of an electron. With this information, scientists were able to determine the mass of an electron. A couple other pieces of history here. Protons, were, which we know are positively charged particles, discovered by Eugene Goldstein, and neutrons are negatively or neutrally charged particles and discovered by James Chadwick. So now, the discovery of the atomic nucleus. So when subatomic particles were discovered, scientists wondered how the particles were put together in an atom. So most scientists, including Thompson, thought it likely that the electrons were evenly distributed throughout an atom filled uniformly with positively charged material. So Thompson had a plum pudding model. So he thought electrons were stunk, stuck in a lump of positive charge similar to raisins and dough. So what he thought was this. He thought the electrons were located in here all close to each other. He didn't think that, he didn't know what we know now that they actually orbit around the nucleus. They just thought they were in one location lumped together. So, this model of the atom turned out to be short-lived. However, due to the work of former student of Thompson, Ernest Rutherford, which Ernest Rutherford is right here. Born in New Zealand, Rutherford was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for Chemistry in 1908, and his portrait is still on the New Zealand $100 bill. So, in 1911, Rutherford and his co-workers wanted to test the existing plum pudding model of the atomic structure. They devised the gold foil, gold foil experiment. Very important. Their test used alpha particles. So when you see this, so I'll read this first, which are helium atoms that have lost their two electrons and have a double positive charge because of the two remaining protons. So when you see this for 2HE, that shows that you have an alpha particle. And once again, we'll talk about calculation of protons and neutrons and electrons later this unit. So, in the experiment, a narrow beam
okay, a narrow beam of alpha particles was directly directed at a thin, very thin sheet of gold. According to the prevailing theory, the alpha particles should have easily passed through the gold with only a slight deflection due to the positive charge thought to be spread out in the gold atoms. So what was surprising is that the small fraction of the alpha particles bounded off the gold foil at very large angles. Some even bounced back straight toward the surface. So, based on this experimental results, Rutherford suggested a new theory of the atom. He proposed that the atom is mostly empty space, thus explaining the lack of deflection of most alpha particles. Because if it was filled with... Um, if there was more content in that atom, there would be more deflection, be bouncing off things. Based on his experimental results, Rutherford suggested a new theory of the atom. He concluded that all positive charge and almost all of the mass are concentrated in a small region that has enough positive charge to account for the great deflection of some of the alpha particles. Rutherford his atomic model is known as the nuclear atom. In the nuclear atom, protons and neutrons are located in a positively charged nucleus, which we know, and the electrons are distributed around the nucleus and occupy almost all the volume of the atom. So once again, we have our nucleus with protons and neutrons. And then orbiting around will be electrons. And they're located on these different energy levels. And I'm just, i got to erase that. That's not. Okay, a proton has a positive charge equal in magnitude to the negative charge of an electron. Atoms are electrically neutral because they contain equal numbers of protons and electrons. And this will lead us into our next video a little bit later. A neutron is neutrally charged. The nuclei of atoms of different elements differ in their number of protons and therefore in the amount of positively char positive charge they possess. Thus, the number of protons determine that atom's identity. And a few other small things. Forces in the nucleus. When two protons are extremely close to one another, there is a strong attraction between them. A similar attraction is, exists when neutrons are very close to each other or when protons and neutrons are very close together. The short range proton to neutron, proton to proton, and neutron to neutron forces that hold the nuclear particles together are referred to as nuclear forces. And the last thing to finish up, the size of the atoms. The radius of an atom is the distance from the center of the nucleus to the outer portion of its electron cloud. Because atomic radii are so small, they are expressed using a unit that is more convenient for their sizes. And they are expressed in picometer. Picometers. And we know picometers, pico, is 1 times 10 to the negative 12. And this concludes our second video on the app.